What is going on, people? And welcome back to episode 5, V, Fumf, Sank of Real Time with Dan. And I know that didn't sound very professional, but heck, let's just screw it and move on. Right, so in this episode, it's going to be rather different. I'm not going to be necessarily going over lots of topics like involving, you know, the big epidemic. I'm not going to be reading loads of news articles. Today's sort of more of a personal episode. I'm sort of I'm sort of going back to my roots and just just turning the camera on and having a chat really rather than just like giving my opinion on all the things that are going on in the epidemic even though that's something that I love doing. You know, it's it's something that, you know, I sort of think of myself and sort of it's something that I do a lot of anyway. And sometimes my I mean, I know my opinion's not the most important thing in the world. So anyway. But without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive straight into the first one. So, so as of late, as I've just said, I'm going to talk about, you know, things with me. So, last week there was no video, and I do apologize, and, you know, I know there won't be many people asking, but to those who will wonder where I've been, I've just been indoors doing bugger all. Like, I've literally been so bored just trying to find things to do is getting very hard now like I mean seriously today however was a bit different we actually I actually decided to go out and have a walk um had a walk with my mum walked over to our local supermarket and to be fair it actually was quite nice you know to get out in the sunshine just to go out and stretch my legs out a little bit and you know just that that in itself it felt very satisfying you know it was it was very nice to be able to do all that and but the thing was, after we had our like after we got to our local supermarket, it turns out our troubles, even though we thought they were over, they were just beginning. Because as soon as we got in the customer service desk, there was a bit of a queue, and one lad decided to get very angry. And I'm I'm sorry. Come on, please stop. Just. <sighs> And the things he was saying were so nasty. I genuinely wanted to just, I wanted to just grab him by the collar and kick him out of the store because he was just being so nasty. Like he called one of the staff, um, and excuse my language, I f- So I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but you don't deserve to shop or you don't even, you don't even remotely deserve to be going out. I think that person should have been banned. I'm sorry. That's just what I think. I mean, I mean, we, we live in 2020, mate, and if you're just going to be impatient and be a nasty <laughs> you don't deserve to shop, okay? That's just, that's the bottom line. No one deserves it. And in fact, I want to hear, like, if any of you have got any stories involving this, then, you know, make sure you, li- make sure you let me know down in the comments, because I always like to know what's been going on, especially around your area, like, what's going on around your area? Uh, if you want to also let me know, but you can't, you don't want to send it via a message on youtube or you want to leave it down in the comments send me an email it's dan.b.brian.hotmail.com and you know just mark it as real time with dan so that's all that's all there is for that and also make sure you mark your comment or your email if you want me to keep you anonymous or if you just want or if you don't want me to shout your name out and maybe link your channel i will do anyway so moving on so apart from that i mean i mean me saying I've been doing nothing, like absolutely nothing, is not entirely true. You know, I've been playing games, I've been watching lots of films, been play I mean, you know I mean everything that everyone would do indoors, really. And, you know, and also doing a lot of FaceTimes with people, you know, just keeping up to date, you know, that's kind of the best way of doing it because in fact that's what I've been doing like it's sort of become a thing now. I actually don't think I've taken a proper phone call in a long time. I mean, I did have one the other day, but it's mostly just been FaceTimes, and I think that's the best way of doing it. I know there are lots of things in the world, like you got Skype, FaceTime, you got, uh, what's it called? House Party. I tried House Party once, and my honest opinion is not brilliant on it, but I'm not going to jump in jump into that one, because I know there are some people that say they do actually quite like it, so... I'm going to keep it at that. So anyway, uh, so moving on anyway, but so as I was saying, I was watching lots of films and playing games. Now, there are some movies that I will say I do enjoy. There are some I don't like. I mean, I've already watched all of Marvel. I've watched all of Friends. I've watched all of, oh God, the list goes on and on. I've watched, I've watched both Equalizers. 
I've watched all of the, you know, um, something or other has fallen, Olympus, London, and Angel, and epic films, by the way. But there was one film that I remember buying once. It was a fiver, and that is one fiver I'm never going to get back now. And that is 78 minutes of my life that was completely wasted. The film in question is called... There's two names for it. It's World War II Behind Enemy Lines, or it's called Beyond the Line. Now, I have to say, it's the worst film I've ever seen. Like, it was... It was as appalling as The Archers. I could probably... I actually would rather listen to The Archers than to watch that film ever again. And the thing that makes me laugh is if you go onto the reviews on... I think it's... I think it's IMDB. And I genuinely laugh at some of the people that say this is a good film. How is it good? It's, it's, it's actually appalling. The people... I, I actually am thinking... I think I've worked it out though, because the ones that gave this a 9, 8, 7 or even a 10 out of 10 are people that actually worked on the film itself and just decided to try and give it a bit of a boosted rating. But the amount of ratings that are 1s, 2s, 0s, 3s and all that, it's actually, it, it, it literally, there's no comparison. It's a dreadful film. So I'm not going to I'm not. I'm trying not to spoil the film too much. It's a World War Two film, obviously, and it's it's basically set just after the, the Second World War has just ended. And basically, these uh, Lancaster bombers or uh, these these planes uh, from the British Army are transporting British soldiers back home to Britain, but they get shot down, and only one survivor crawls out of the wreckage and is face alone in a woods fil- filled with a uh, Nazi German with a sorry excuse me i can't speak today he's basically supposedly all by himself but he's got to evade nazi he's, he's basically got to avoid nazis effectively so sounds simple enough and he has the work of he actually he, he gets saved by an american soldier who's actually who's just trying to hunt them all down and the everything about it's wrong Everything. I mean, there were some bits that actually were half decent. Some of them, though, it just didn't really. It didn't really grab my attention much. In fact, I think half the time I was on my phone, and I mean, half hour in, I was thinking, "What is this?" And even the voiceover segments were appalling. They sounded boxy, hollow, and and very grainy. Like I could, I thought they were speaking through like one of those loudspeakers that that Russians use to to encourage their men to go into battle. And I seriously swear to God, I I cannot begin to imagine how low the budget was because everything from the the like the the videography was terrible. I mean, it was meant to simulate the fact that the cameraman was running and I suppose that makes sense, but most segments of this film were a massive no for me. I reckon even the drone work, the drone work was even worse because it was just there was too much of it. That does not simulate much of World War Two very much, because all because everything was always filmed on the ground. I mean, I know it's meant to simulate, you know, like an above shot, but it just it looked way too artificial to me. It didn't look good at all. Even the acting itself was absolutely appalling. I mean, I will say, the guy who was playing the American soldier, I say he was probably the best bit about it. You know, he was definitely, he was the most determined. He was meant to be the the brave one, the the hero, and the one who kills all of them. You know, that's just it, really. And, you know, I just don't feel like the story was well executed whatsoever. And I actually did some research, and it turned out the director, uh, I can't remember his name, I think it was uh, something, Tim Mills, I think it was. I'm, I might be making this up. Don't judge me on that one. Uh, I'll 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 flash his name up on the screen if I can find it. He, I've seen his I've seen what his bio says. It says he's worked on low budget stuff. So it turns out he does this on a th- on a bit of a basis. But he does low budget horror films. That's his genre. So he he tried to go from horror to more action packed, and it just doesn't work. Like I mean, good budget or like really well executed action films include things like you know all any of the like 
Olympus has fallen, London has fallen, like any of that. They are epic films. The Equalizer, that was fantastic. Or any of the Die Hards. The Die Hard franchise is legendary. I mean, that came out, the first one came out in 1988. And heck, I could watch that film thousands of times over, even if it is meant to be a Christmas film or not. And I'm not going to jump on that one because people are going to just, there's going to be a thousand people saying to me, it's not a Christmas film, Dan. It's just, it's just an action film. But yeah, whatever. I don't care. But still, there are way better films to watch. Even Saving Private Ryan has, like, Saving Private Ryan is the clear victor there. Even Fury beats it, because they're way better war films. They have way better, like, way better visuals, way better story, and way more, like, way more actual, actual proper action sequences. Because you can tell, so mo- they're only at, they had a very limited amount of actors. They must have had, oh god, a cast of about 15, if that. I mean, I'll be, I would actually be in shock if there was more than 100 people there. Like, because, I mean, they did, of course, have to make people do the same role again. Like, maybe be the same Nazi officers who were walking through the woods. And it is ridiculous. I seriously would, I, I wonder where the idea came from. The idea was the the actual idea itself sounded pretty good. I mean the I mean another good thing about it was the artwork on the box. The artwork on the box was immaculate. I actually that's the one thing I liked. Apart from uh, I think his name was Jackson Berlin. He's the one who actually played the the American soldier who rescues the British soldier. Now of course that's not to say that you know the like the actual film itself was just terrible. But the artwork and Jackson Berlin. They were the two at least half decent parts of this film. But it's so appallingly bad. Like, I I swear, I've never seen a worse film in my life. Although the, although I will say, if you know what I'm talking about when I say, uh, I, can't, I, th- I think it was um, something born in Hollywood, um, a star born in Hollywood, I think that's what it's called, with, uh, I think it's, it's Brad Pitt, Margot Robbie, and... Uh, what's his name? I think it's Leonardo DiCaprio. That film confused me because that was meant to be referring back to, um, uh, was I think it was Charles the Charles Manson family who uh, murdered. I think it was was it. I think it was Catherine Tate in the sixties. Now, and the thing was, it really didn't. It didn't make any sense to me. I thought, so what's the so what's the punchline or what's the what's the main story here? Like this is an actor who's got a stunt double, and it's like one minute they need him, one minute they don't. Next thing you know, they cut to these other things, and like I'm not going to jump on it too much. If you've never seen it before, then you know I I mean it's it's not a bad film. It's just it's a confusing film. Like I I sort of wondered, you know, what was the story about? And my dad had to tell me. But even my dad said to me that he was a bit. He he seemed a bit like um, what was that? Well, I don't know. Actually, speaking of um, actually, I'm I'm gonna sort of jump on a little bit of another bandwagon here. Like I know I often talk about mics, but I forgot to mention this in my last episode. Um, Road have actually recently released the Road Wireless Go and the Road Lavalier Go, which is actually my go-to personal microphone if I am say doing an interview or if I'm. If I'm in a rush and just need to throw on a body pack, then I'll use that. They've released it in white now. So this is going to be really handy for if you're wearing, you know, if you're wearing a white shirt like I am, or if you're if you're in a wedding dress, you know, that's going to be very helpful. And another thing they've also included was a, I think it was called the Mag Clip Go or something along those lines. And basically what that is, it's sort of like a magnetic clip that you can clip to any bit of clothing. And what it basically does is you can you can magnetically connect it underneath. So it means there's no need to use the little clip that it comes with. You can just you can just attach it via magnets. And I think that is ingenious. I actually wonder, like there are some there are some methods of lavalier mics that do require a magnet, which I think is incredibly it's actually really handy. You know, why not just I mean, some mics should really be, you know, that they, they have their own methods and some of them work, some of them don't. And as well as that, they've also released, uh, I think it's the interviewer um, interviewer pack. So in essence, it's it's basically like a like an interviewer's microphone sort of handle, and you slide a wireless go into it, and it becomes somewhat of like an um, 
an interview microphone so you can use it almost like a, a news um like a like a news anchor or something so it's definitely a very it's definitely a very versatile microphone now like it's actually made it's now gotten more uses than ever i mean heck if you want to use it like an interview microphone you can just simply attach it to you can attach it to anything a bit of cardboard or even even like another even like a like a mini tripod would do the trick and it'd be perfect you could use it for voiceover and it's only about 140 pounds anyway i think that's an absolute steal like i never have had a better mic than that and the fact that it also connects up to the video mic ntg which i also love is even better like it's such a versatile little microphone for the price i think it is a i think it's a it's a no-brainer I know there are other there are other companies like Sennheiser that have got way better products or Neumann and they've got multi thousand dollar or pound microphones. The thing is the Rode Wireless Go, it's an investment, I think. It's it's a proper investment. If I if, I mean I could have done this whole thing, I could have even done this podcast with that mic if I wanted to. It's absolutely fantastic. And fair to say, like like in terms of microphones, there are lots of different options. And I mean, hey, even this one, this one that I'm talking into, which is the Aston Stealth, this one's got a load of uses as well. I mean, hey, it's got four voices on the dial. It's You can power it via phantom power or technically boost the signal. So you don't need a cloud lifter or a fat head or anything to make that signal louder without having to drive your preamp any louder, which I think is just phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And... The thing with dynamics is they do require a lot of gain, but this simply, you can boost the gain just by turning on the phantom power. I think that's ingenious. I will say, however, it does, you know, it does suffer quite badly from what are called plosives, where you, like, when you expel a breath or when you use a word that expels a lot of air, like, like the word plosive, and when you hear that sort of like that really horrid, that's generally what that is referring to, but I mean, a pot filter or even like a foam windscreen should do it. And it does have foam on the inside, like right there. But it's a very thin layer of foam and it's not its not ideal. But who knows? Maybe Aston will... I mean, they do actually sell a pot filter, but it's quite expensive. So, and I've already got one anyway, but the fact is it doesn't really, it doesn't really work on this. So I'm just simply keeping it off to one side just so that I can avoid like putting a plosive directly into the microphone's diaphragm but anyway uh, so apart from that like apart from that like i can't really say i've been playing many games like i mostly play games on my phone if i'm being brutally honest i, I will say though that some games like like some games are better than others like eight ball pool a snooker game i'm playing brawl stars or anything like that you know that's sort of what i tend to veer towards but Apart from that, like, it's been a bit on-off, really. Like, I sort of tried a few other games, like, I think it's called Pooking Billiard City. That game was dead. I did not like that game at all. It, it was so... It didn't feel half as smooth as 8 Ball Pool. It also didn't really have as much excitement. It was just, you know, pot all the balls and then move on to the next level. I mean, if they made the, if they actually made it, you know, somewhat fun and made, and made it much faster pace, I reckon I would love that game. And that's what I like. I like games where they have a nice fast pace, you know, they really get you they really get you on into it. But apart from that, and I was actually meant to be doing other videos as well. There was actually a plan I was going to be using some like I actually had a Easter video lined up, but that never happened because unfortunately I didn't quite have a, enough eggs to do it. It was going to be 20 ways to open an Easter egg. Because obviously we all know that everyone opens an Easter egg, you know, just by smacking it down on a table and then just picking up the bits. But the thing is, I think that there are lots of other ways to do it. I mean, you could just hit it with a hammer, but then you just bruise the chocolate. You could you could put your elbow through it. You could you could headbutt it, or you could even you could just press it down and just keep pressing, almost like you're almost like a hydraulic press. I think that is a better way to do it, but. Apart from that, I can't really say there's a lot more like to do with that because, again, I don't really have any eggs left, and I would I wouldn't be able to do it in twenty because I've only got I've probably got about maybe six or seven eggs left, and that's just not enough. But never mind. I mean, then again, it is it is getting on for summer, which by our walk today it was about twenty one degrees outside, and 
And heck, I know that in some places it's going to be warmer than that. But to us, that is like summer. Like, it's so nice out today. And it's that it's that nice heat that is, you can walk around and you're not going to be overly sweating. It's it's that good heat. It's the, it's the sort of heat that I like. And that's why I like springtime. Because generally you get the nice sort of, you get the nice summer heat. Or you... Or you get the nice British heat where it's not humid and it's not too dry. So that's what I like. And I know there are, like, I was going to actually go and have a walk in the woods. But the fact was, we were so tired by the time we got home. We just had to, we had to go home. Like, we were so exhausted. But apart from that, I can't really say I've been doing that much more. Like, of course, we've had to stay in an awful lot. And, of course, I mean, there have been no videos from Ryan as of late. I mean, he was making a isolation vlog series but he's had to stop that for a while and I'm not going to jump on why because that's up to him to tell you and plus I don't really want to I don't really want to dig a deep hole for myself so but I want to I do want to wish him all the best you know hope he's doing all right you know especially considering everything that's happening and you know every like loads of workers have been laid off and like only hospitals and supermarkets and Anywhere else that is, you know, for key workers, you know, that's all that's open now. But anyone, I mean, heck, I'm actually recording this on a Thursday. And Thursdays, we are basically clapping for the NHS for a couple of minutes at 8 o'clock. And that's exactly what we might do again today. And I, to, to every one of those in the NHS doing what they're doing, you know, I will always applaud you. And every key worker, everyone deserves applause. I, I just think... Who knows? I mean, the impact that we're, the impact that it's having on this virus, you know, it's incredible. I know that the death toll is still sort of going up and down a ton, but the fact of the matter is, you know, the more, like, the, the more we manage to social distance ourselves, the better off it will be. And I, I know I said I wouldn't really talk about it too much, but hell, it's my show. I can do what I want. <laughs> but anyway, um, so apart from that, I really can't say I've been doing much else, to be fair, because it has been very boring. But hopefully I'll be trying to, you know, figure some other things out. I will say I've been playing a lot of Minecraft and I did debate whether or not I should like do some actual like Minecraft, like not streaming, but just upload some random footage of it. But I'm not sure because I feel I don't know if that'll be boring or if that's going to be, you know, something you guys are going to want to watch. But let me know, like, let me know down in the comments. Like, if you guys want me to do that, then I'll give it a think, you know. Because, well, <laughs> my last world I've died again, as I always do. But this time I've just gone onto a normal world. I've I've not bothered doing hardcore anymore because I always die in them. I don't know why. The thing is, because obviously it's just the way it is. You're bound to die at some point unless you actually go and just kill the ender dragon. But whatever. And then you just subtract the, the middleman and then just just go and make a vanilla ice cream but and now I'm just getting more and more random than ever but yes I mean heck have you seen the have you seen the mad coconut husk on my head it's getting worse but yeah I did need to have a haircut by the way and it was like two weeks ago and I'm sure in about a week or so I'm going to need another one because my hair grows like bleeding grass it gets so thick and long and it's very fast and thick growing hair it's, it's horrid I mean, I do like my hair, but I just don't like it when it gets too long because then it starts to starts to get a bit ridiculous. I start to look... Sorry, excuse me. I can never... It starts to get too long and ridiculous that eventually it makes me go mad. And fair to say, you know, as I say, last week I didn't upload and the thing was I was actually having a bit of a hard time to concentrate. I was thinking about putting up another video, but I just didn't really have... I didn't really have enough encouragement to do it. I wasn't really like, I was feeling so like beside myself that I just decided, do you know what? I'm not going to bother because all the effort of, you know, getting the camera out, monitor, laptop, which I'm actually not using at the moment, just here for reference. But the fact is all that effort just to get all this out, you know, it's, it's a lot of work and it is very hard, but Hopefully at some point, you know, I will try again. I'll, I'll, I'll try and pick myself up. You know, just really, just keep going, keep going, and keep going. I want to, I want this to become something. I want to keep going with YouTube. 
I just need all the encouragement, all the motivation and all the leeway I can get. Because the more of that I have, then I know for a fact that, you know, I'll give it everything I've got and, you know, hopefully not, hopefully not just go back into my, into my somber place. But yes, but no, I, but I think on this, on that note, I think I'm going to end this episode there. So, and of course, I will try and get another episode up next week just to try and keep the streak rolling because, of course, I'm starting it all over again. But, heck, got to give it a go, haven't I? But anyway, hopefully you guys have enjoyed that. And I know I have ranted on about a few things. And I know that I did bring some other bits up that were not quite relevant to the topics I normally talk about. But I considered the fact that I just didn't want to talk about the same things. But, you know, changing it up. It's no big deal. I just wanted to do it, you know, for the sake of, you know, trying to keep the channel fresh. But anyway, hopefully if you guys have enjoyed, then make sure you do hit the thumbs up and make sure you subscribe down below and make sure you hit the bell icon so you won't be missing any videos. And as I always say, if you want to submit something to me like a story or a video or anything to me that you want me to view in the next video, then, you know, go ahead and let me know down below. It's always good to hear from you guys and you know I hope you guys are staying safe and hopefully you guys are following social distancing. Anyways, you guys take great care and I'll see you next time.